Welcome to Season 2 of the To Health With That podcast, where we break up big health topics into small bites. I'm Amy, and this season I'll share all the tips, tricks, and hacks you need to get healthy with an MTHFR mutation in a step-by-step, week-by-week process. I can't wait. This week, let's go over the COMT fast picture. As you can imagine, it's the flip side of COMT slow. This enzyme works too well, eliminating crucial substances before they have the chance to act. The most well-researched polymorphism that contributes to this picture is COMT-VAL-158-MET in the VAL-VAL pattern. But again, COMT total activity is additive across all of the different polymorphisms and is best determined by symptoms and personality. So the signs and symptoms that you might have a fast COMT affect, again, neurotransmitters, stress hormones, and estrogens. In terms of neurotransmitters, low dopamine, low epinephrine, and low norepinephrine look like general lack of enthusiasm, Super relaxed, laid back personality, maybe low motivation, difficulty remaining focused on one task, possible diagnosis of ADD or ADHD, and undictive tendencies. These same neurotransmitters do double duty as stress hormones, and so we also see these people just shine. They just turn on in stressful situations. They are at their best under pressure. So, ERs are generally filled with doctors who are fast COMT folks. Stimulation seeking. These people like lots of noise, lights, chatter, stuff going on, chaos to get their neurotransmitters fired up. They fall asleep very easily. They have a tendency towards restless legs and constipation, and they're typically much better with caffeine or other stimulants. COMT also affects estrogen, meaning it lowers them, and so people with fast COMT are prone to dry skin, osteoporosis. They often started menarche later than their peers. And in women, we see symptoms related to low estrogens like moodiness, irregular periods, or absent periods. There's a lower tendency towards hormonal cancers, including breast and prostate. So well done, you guys. That's awesome. And potentially a lower sex drive. Remember that other gene SNPs can affect these same neurotransmitters and hormones But if you have this symptom picture, then addressing the situation is appropriate no matter what your genetic report says. The COMT fast genotype carries with it some superpowers as well. I mean, as though hormonal cancer protection wasn't one of them. On a surface level, the COMT variant gets divided into warrior and worrier pictures. COMT fast because the lower level of stress hormone falls into the warrior category. We say warrior because stressful situations truly do make people with the COMT fast genotype shine. While others get overwhelmed and overstimulated, these folks are in the zone. They are at peak performance and completely on point. COMT fast folks are really well suited to working in emergency rooms, the trading floor on Wall Street, or the racetrack, right? They also have gifts in terms of shifting between topics or areas of focus quickly. None of us are technically good at multitasking, but COMT folks switch between tasks and activities with relative ease. This remarkable skill is called cognitive flexibility, and they have lots of it. In terms of managing a fast COMT, step one, as with everything else, is balance your methylation. As we discussed, the COMT enzyme is dependent on healthy methylation. So the first thing you would do in this situation, just like with COMT slow, is to optimize, right? Get your basic B vitamins, find the best B12 for you, add a methylation driver like 5-LMTHF or SAMe. Optimize your doses of those things based on how you actually feel and how your symptoms look on a symptom tracker. If you don't have one yet, you can get a free symptom tracker by signing up for the newsletter at tohealthwiththat.com. Keep in mind that with a fast COMT, your neurotransmitters are naturally low, and pushing methylation drivers in this case can make a huge and immediate difference to your mood and affect. Getting good methylation drivers into the works really helps. Step two, optimize your diet. 
Protein boosts dopamine, which is exactly what you want for a fast COMT. In a fast COMT situation, eating a high-protein diet will keep those flagging neurotransmitters up for a good mood and better focus. Look for a higher-protein meal at breakfast and lunch and moderate-protein dinner so the neurotransmitters don't interfere with your sleep. Adding in high-magnesium foods helps as well because magnesium is one of the best nutrients for a fast COMT, and COMT needs magnesium in order to do anything at all, so you do need this. Look for dark green leafy veggies, low-fat dairy, nuts, and legumes. The magnesium will also help balance the tendency towards constipation, muscle cramps, and restless legs, and if you can't get enough from your diet, a magnesium supplement before you go to bed can really help to calm things down so you can fall into a deep and restful sleep. Step three, stimulate. Such a big part of this picture involves stress hormones, so balancing those helps to optimize performance. This means, like your slow COMT counterparts, declutter your home and keep it tidy. I know that sounds counterintuitive, but a calm, chaos-free environment reduces stress hormones, which is not as crucial for COMT fast folks, but it also makes focus easier, and that is crucial for COMT fast folks. Interrupt work with activities that give your brain a dopamine boost, like video games or a quick burst of exercise. Just make sure you're keeping it in check because those things can become addictive in low dopamine brains, especially things like video games or something super stimulating, right? Step number four is to balance your hormones. As I said last week, balancing hormones is an entire podcast series in itself. Still, there's a few things you can do in low hormone states as well. So, like we talked about with the COMT fast, seed cycling. Seed cycling is too much to get into in this episode, but in the show notes, there's a link to a detailed article. It's a lovely way to balance your hormones, whether you need more or less of them, and to regulate hormones really safely. Think about some herbal medicines. Shatavari and black cohosh and red clover are all known to boost estrogens in a safe way, but it's still best to work with a knowledgeable practitioner if you're going down this route. Exercise. So building muscle mass and reducing fat can help to bring your estrogens into a healthy balance. So low estrogens will decrease lean muscle mass And so gaining that muscle mass actually helps to balance and regulate all of your hormones. Thank you so much for listening today. Next week, we're going to review glutathione before we talk about some of the SNPs that can affect your glutathione levels. Please subscribe so you don't miss any episodes. And if you like what you're doing here, I would love it if you would leave a review. Thank you so much.